Hey guys, welcome, welcome back. Today I'm going to be sharing with you all the luxury pieces I've sold last year in 2023 and the reasons why. And I'm also going to talk about whether I lost money by selling these items or if I had a really good time recuperating the cost of the items. I find these videos always a little nerve wracking and tricky to film because there are always going to be those opinions that come for me saying, you used to love that thing, I can't believe you sold it, almost like I've done something terribly wrong. So I find it is a rather sensitive topic and some of these items might be loved by a lot of you guys but in saying that our styles evolve our lives evolve and we just need different things at different points in our lives and we're allowed to change our minds I am sure most of you guys can relate with me on that and there is one item that I actually really regret letting go so I'm gonna discuss that at the end which is a little bit of a different experience for me because usually when I let my designer items go I am generally really happy to declutter and I generally think a lot before letting these items go so I'm surprised but not surprised that I missed this item but anyway there are six items on this list I would have loved to declutter more last year but I just didn't have the time and with the resale market so slow at the moment it hasn't been the most motivating anyway let's get started with the most obvious item if you guys have been watching my channel for a while it is the Van Cleef & Appel's Alhambra necklace in the mother of pearl in the vintage size. This is probably the only item on this list that I never really loved. I never had the face with this item where I wore it a lot. I don't think I ever really loved it that much so it was probably not the wisest purchase for me. I guess I just got sucked into the whole hype. I know a lot of people love their BCA Alhambra pieces but I guess I should have really been able to differentiate between what I really wanted and and what seemed like a good item to add to my collection. So there are two big reasons I think I didn't get on with this piece. First being it is not the most carefree piece of jewelry. It does have the mother of pearl which is quite sensitive to any moist water so it is not recommended that you wear it on a rainy day in the shower but I mean it's fine jewelry. For me I want my fine jewelry to be really carefree which is why I now just prefer plain precious metal with maybe diamonds or other stones that don't really tarnish or react with water or sweat. So I can just leave these pieces on, get my cost per wear and not really have to think about the weather, what activity I'm doing for the day. I got it thinking that it is going to be my everyday necklace but because it is not so carefree I couldn't do that with it so that really wasn't great for me. The other reason I didn't love it so much is because of the size of its pendant. I feel it is not small enough to be worn as a very carefree casual everyday necklace but then it's not big enough to be a statement piece especially with the mother of pearl not being the most carefree you couldn't even really wear it as an everyday necklace anyway. It it would have actually been better as an occasional more statement necklace that you just wear on an occasion like a night out but it just wasn't big enough to make that sort of a statement so it didn't really have a place in my lifestyle but I wouldn't call it the worst purchase because VCA pieces especially the Alhambra line they resell pretty well and you can get a pretty decent price for them so I remember paying for that necklace 3,400 Australian dollars back three or four years ago and when I sold it through consignment I think I only lost like $100 or $50. I got most of my money back, which was really great. There is the price increase. So I think one of these necklaces new at the moment is over 4,000 Australian dollars, which isn't a huge jump from what I paid back a few years ago. So I thought the resale value was excellent. With a lot of luxury fine jewelry pieces, they don't really hold their value very well. For example, a lot of your Cartier pieces, you're going to sell at a loss. So it wasn't the worst thing that I purchased, the thing that didn't really work out for me but yeah I don't think I ever really loved it that much. Next up is the Gucci Super Mini Dionysus bag in the metallic gold that I got a couple of years ago as an evening bag. This was also another item that I didn't get a lot of use out of before I decided to sell it and I sold it at a bit of a loss. So I believe I paid around 1500 Australian dollars. Maybe it was a little less than that. And I believe it was 2021 that I purchased it just before the Christmas season because I wanted a very bling small clutch bag that I can take to all my Christmas parties. So I did get to use it a few times that year during that festive season, but I was never ever reaching for it again after that. The first thing is the capacity is okay. You can fit your phone, your key, 
panties and one lip balm maybe but it was just so tight every time I put my phone in I had to really squash it and the sides will bulge out a tiny bit and every time you take anything out of the bag you had to reorganize things to put the item back in because it was just so tight in there which I didn't mind too much because it wasn't an everyday bag it was an occasional bag but the main reason I decided to go is because I added another gold bag that I just absolutely adore this is my wedding bag so I purchased this back in early 2022 just ahead of my wedding this is the Jimmy Choo mini bonbon style I know Jimmy Choo is typically known for their shoes but I do really love some of their bag designs especially the evening bags I just think this is so pretty it's so elegant but cute all at the same time love this handle it's just a much more practical bag as well even though it is a mini bag because it is a bucket style you can fit quite a bit in there and you don't have to struggle to fit your things in and it also comes with a metal chain so you can be hands-free and wear it as a shorter crossbody bag so when I found this gold bag which can completely replace the Gucci Dionysus I thought I really don't have that many evening occasions in my lifestyle to warrant having two very festive dressy gold bags so I decided to let that one go I do find gold almost a neutral with evening outfits so whenever you're wearing something a bit more dressy I find gold just never clashes with anything I feel like gold is even a better option than having a very dressy black bag for example and we know that black bags are always going to be the safest option but when it comes to evening wear depending on what you're wearing especially with say summer dresses I live in the sunny Sydney so a lot of the times even for evening events we are wearing more summery or light color palettes and black sometimes just looks too dark and too serious and just way too heavy so I find gold bags excellent for all of the evening outfits so I do love having a gold evening bag in my collection but I just didn't need to and coming back to the resale price I lost quite a bit of money I think I got paid $900 after paying a little bit of the consignment fee so yeah I lost about 30 to 40 percent of the price that I paid but I was okay with it because I knew it was a bag that I will never really use so when I'm sure about something I really don't mind losing money but for the items that I'm even a little bit on the fence about if I'm gonna lose too much money I tend to keep because I don't want to regret the sale the next bag I sold and I can't believe I sold it because I loved it so, so much. So this next bag is one of those items that I really loved. I got so much use out of it. And slowly, slowly, it didn't suit my lifestyle anymore. So when I noticed that I wasn't reaching for it for at least two years, I decided to let it go. And it is the Louis Vuitton Neo Noé. Yes, this was one of the very first bags I reviewed on my channel. All the way back in 2018 when I just started this channel and it is one of those videos that got me a lot of views initially at that point and I think it's because my love for this bag really shined through that video I used that bag every single day for the first two years that I owned it it was my work bag it was my weekend bag it was just the easiest bucket bag that could fit everything that I need fast forward a few years I noticed myself really not reaching for it one I guess I acquired more bags in my collection but also that size became a size that I just didn't prefer anymore it was a little too bulky to use as an everyday bag I started really preferring to use smaller bags especially with COVID and all we really downsized the physical items that we carry around with us I mean we don't even need a wallet anymore all our driver's license ID credit cards everything were just stored on our phone and at least for where I live that really changed during the COVID lockdown so after this whole COVID thing happened I got really good at downsizing and I really never needed that size bag for an everyday bag and it was a bit of an in-between size once I could do that because if I'm going to work on a day that I want to carry a lot with me like my laptop my lunch and everything that bag was still too small because it's just too small to carry a laptop in it I mean you could if you really wanted to because it is an open bucket bag but your laptop will just stick out and also if you have a larger laptop 
it's not going to fit. So on those days, I would much prefer to use one of my larger totes so everything can fit a lot more easily. And then on those days that I just want to use a very casual bag for running errands or shopping where I don't need to carry as much, I would reach for my smaller bags than that. So it lost a little bit of a purpose in my collection. Now, the resale price wasn't too bad. It was really beat up by the time I sold it. It even started getting cracking in the glazing, little cracks on the canvas. So also I have to let you guys know it didn't wear the best, but I sold it before it got even more trashed. But I was okay with it because I know how much I used that bag. So in terms of the price that I paid for it, back in 2018, I think I bought it, I paid 1,850 Australian dollars. And even in the condition that it was, when I sold it, after paying for the consignment fees, I still got around 1200 Australian dollars back, which I guess is a loss of $650, but I was completely okay with it because for $650, I got so much joy and use out of it and it wasn't even in a great condition. So the fact that I could even sell it really surprised me. And I guess this goes to show how well some of these brands do on the resale market, especially now that the resale market's slower. There are only certain brands that do okay in the resale market. And I feel like you just can never go wrong with Louis Vuitton monogram bags. Next up, I did let the last one of my toiletry pouches from Louis Vuitton go, which was the size 26. There was once a point in time that I owned the whole trifecta. So I had the original toiletry pouches in the monogram in the size 26, the 19 and the 15. I found myself not really using the 19 or the 15 that much because the sizes were pretty similar to the cosmetic pouches that I owned. So it was a pretty easy decision for me to let those two go about three years ago now, but I always thought I don't have anything similar to the size 26, so I'm gonna keep it. And I do like the idea of some people converting it into a bag. So I thought the 26 was probably the most versatile size and I wanted to have one toiletry pouch in my collection. And then I realized I never use that toiletry pouch. Not as a bag, not as an actual toiletry pouch. It's too big to use as a catch-all pouch in your everyday bag. So when I wasn't really using it, even for traveling, which is what it's designed for, I realized it's probably not an item worth keeping, taking up space in my wardrobe. I realized with traveling, I just really prefer to use cheaper toiletry bags that are more functional with compartments, that are completely wipeable with a hook so you can hang it on the shower screen. So I realized if I'm not gonna use it as an actual converted bag, I'm never really gonna use it. There was another big reason that pushed me to let it go, and it is that I added something really similar from Dior. This is their 30 Montan pouch, which has a very similar shape and silhouette, but I just love the look of this one a lot more than the look of that Louis Vuitton toiletry pouch because the finish looks a lot better with the leather trimming, the CD plaque at the front, the beautiful oblique jacquard, which is so Dior. And you could just as easily convert this into a shoulder bag by attaching a chain through under the zipper section. So when I got this one, which looks a lot better in my opinion to use as a clutch bag, I could really not just having the toiletry pouch in my collection anymore. Now, the toiletry pouch wasn't the worst purchase in terms of the resale value because I did make a little bit of a profit on that toiletry pouch. If I sold it a little earlier, say two years ago, they were selling for a crazy premium, so I would have made more money on it. But even selling it last year when the resale market was slowing down and the toiletry pouches weren't selling at as much of a premium anymore, I still made some money on it. When I bought it back in 2019, I think it was, was, I paid 550 Australian dollars. That is right. They used to cost so much less than what they cost now. There are new toiletry pouch versions from Louis Vuitton these days when I believe they're like $1,500 or something ridiculous. And my payout after selling it through a consignment service was $850. So I made a $300 profit, which I thought wasn't too bad. So yeah, it was still a great purchase in that regard. 
Next is another item from Louis Vuitton and it is the mini pochette from the 2022 Holiday Illustrations collection with Vivienne in Paris. That was my first year getting anything from the Louis Vuitton Christmas Illustration collection. It was a year that we traveled to Paris and it was also a year that they did South Korea for the very first time. So they feature Seoul which is the capital city of South Korean and me being Korean I just felt that that year was really special for me. Me. So I ended up adding a card holder from the Seoul collection and also mini pochette with the Paris print on it. The reason I sold it is simple because first of all, I do already own two mini pochettes so that one wasn't really going to add any functional value to my collection. This Damia Abin one I've had for years, I believe I bought it few years before I even started this YouTube channel so I think this is actually from 2015 or something like that and I remember paying like 300 Australian dollars so this has been loved and beaten up but guess what the canvas from back in those days was a lot thicker so this one is still looking really really great and when that whole thing was happening with the mini pochettes becoming so rare Louis Vuitton weren't stocking many mini pochettes anymore and when they just started putting their prices up on this one a lot I thought I'm gonna get a backup in the monogram so this one I got it 2020 I think and it was still a reasonable price at $485 and it was at a time that these mini pochettes were really really hard to get. They were just selling out all the time. So I remember putting in an order for this one, wait to six weeks for it to arrive, but I was so happy to have it. But this canvas feels a little flimsy compared to the old school one. But nonetheless, I was really happy to get my hands on a backup because I just love the mini pochette. So I really didn't need another mini pochette. And the other big reason that I decided to let it go is because in the Paris print, what I really wanted wasn't the mini pochette, to be honest. It was actually the key pouch that I really wanted in it. But this one was completely sold out by the time I made it to the boutique. So the way I purchased this one is actually through a friend. She was traveling overseas and she saw this one at the airport. So I transferred her the money and she picked it up for me from the airport. I guess the airport doesn't have like local clients. So I was really happy that she was able to get this for me. But when I got this one I thought I don't need two SLGs in the Paris print so I'm gonna let my mini pochette go. That one was a little bit of a surprise in terms of the resale value. Prior to say 2022 mini pochettes with the Christmas illustrations generally sold over retail but because Louis Vuitton put their prices up so much on these mini pochettes I actually lost money and I noticed that these mini pochettes were just still sitting in their inventory so you could easily just buy one new. So I I believe I paid 1120 or 80 for that one and by the time I sold it through a consignment service I only got $850 back so that was like $300 loss which is a pretty hefty amount so I thought about keeping it but at the end of the day I thought I'm never gonna use it I'm never really gonna get joy out of it because I have this one to look at if I wanted to see the pretty print so I decided to just take the loss and let it go last but not least it is the item that I actually regret selling which I thought I am not gonna regret it is my Loewe puzzle bag in the beautiful tan color in the small size. I sold it last year after having it for about four years. I bought it back in 2019. This was another item that I absolutely loved and adored and used so much for the first couple of years of owning it. It was my go-to weekend bag but a similar story with this one after the lockdowns and all I was really downsizing and not carrying too many items with me so that bag was becoming even a little too big for me and at one point it started feeling a little bulky which is crazy it's not even a bulky bag but because when you look at it from the side it's more of that square profile it does have a little bit of a width to it and I started to really prefer using smaller bags on my weekends so I noticed I wasn't grabbing it nearly as much as I used to and there was a time that I was just really never using it in the sort of year leading to me deciding to let it go. If you guys watched my declutter my bag collection 
collection with me from 2022 you might remember me discussing this and your opinions were kind of divided half of you told me just keep it because it is a beautiful bag it is so functional and you are going to come back to it and half of you said yeah I can see what you mean just let it go it's not a bag that's working out for your lifestyle anymore so just don't hold on to it and I decided I don't love that bag as much as I used to anymore and after having a few other tan bags in my collection I thought I don't need this many tan colored bags in my collection anymore now that I have some other options in that color when I first bought that Loewe puzzle bag that was the only tan color bag in my collection so I bought it solely because I love the color so when I added other tan bags I thought I can let it go safely which I hadn't regretted after letting go until a couple of months ago. You guys know that I do have on my wish list this year to add a medium sized easy going bag that is just a little bigger than your typical mini bags so you can put a few other extra bits and pieces and I want this bag to be a zip of laptop so it is really secure I don't need to worry about things falling out of it and I wanted it to preferably have a crossbody strap as well. So I've been looking at the Speedy 20s, the Celine Mini Boston bag which is exactly the size that I'm looking for which I shared with you guys in shopping vlogs that I've done in the last couple of weeks and some of you guys pointed out to me how about your puzzle bag that would be the perfect medium sized bag and it just was a light bulb moment I forgot that I even saw that bag and I once had it in my collection and then when I read some of your comments I thought oh my goodness that would have been the perfect bag that I need right now so I really regret letting that go now. Am I going to consider repurchasing it? Probably not because the prices are insane now. I believe one of those small size puzzle bags is almost 5,000 Australian dollars. When I got mine back in 2019, I paid $2,800 and I thought that was a really good price point for a beautiful full leather bag. And I just can't bring myself to pay double that amount. So yeah, that would have been a perfect bag for what I need at the moment, being a new mom. So I really regret selling it. I just wish I hadn't sold it, but yeah, I wouldn't necessarily repurchase it. I I believe that original classic puzzle bag is also discontinued and now they have a different type of puzzle bag which I don't love the look of. Also I feel that it is a bag that I've had and enjoyed. I moved it on. Yes if I still had it in my collection it would have been perfect and of course I would have used it for that purpose but since I let it go already if I'm going to spend money on getting another bag in that sort of category I would prefer to experience a different bag if that makes sense because I let it go already so I can't undo what I did so I feel a bit like I've been there done that so if I'm going to buy another bag I would prefer to experience a different bag so these are the luxury items I let go last year in 2023 there are some other items on the chopping board still I do need to do some more decluttering as my lifestyle has drastically changed in the last year or so so I'll do more videos around this topic of decluttering which is one of my favorite topics to talk about I hope you guys enjoyed this video as always thank you so much for watching and spending some of your precious time with me today and I can't wait to see you again soon in my next video bye guys